Item Number SCP-4715 Object Class Keter Special Containment Procedures SCP-4715 has been contained in the containment complex within Area 4715-23. Area 4715-23 is an underground compound located 315 meters below sea level, at an undisclosed location within Canada's Stikheen region. Chosen for both its distance from the nearest city and proximity to LOI-517 Sigma. Stocks of materials required for Procedure 4715 Waning Moon are to be maintained on site. The containment complex consists of two 20 by 30 by 20 meter cells, environmentally regulated in order to simulate a mid Pleistocene climate, seasonally between negative 10 and 5 degrees centigrade. A central observation security laboratory oversees both chambers. Observation panels constructed from laminated ballistics glass 25 cm thick with plate steel shutters oversee both cells from a vantage point across the top wall of both chambers. In addition to visual observation, throughout each cell, video, motion sensing, and thermal security cameras have been installed for remote observation of the subject and will release concentrated resin of ferrotoxin aerosol spray should SCP-4715 breach containment. Aerosol will continue to be sprayed until it has been driven back to an acceptable proximity to the containment chambers, or until manually shut off by site command. Should personnel prove incapable of preventing SCP-4715 from exiting Area 4715-23, detonation of the on-site thermal barrack weapon is authorized. Following this, recontainment of SCP-4715 must be carried out before it is able to fully recover. Procedure 4715 Waning Moon Procedure 4715 Waning Moon is a ritual that must be performed on the full moon of each month, and requires the use of 1 D-Class personnel, 60 kg of red meat, a hand-woven wicker basket, and human blood. The shaman must be anointed with human blood, and then place the meat within the wicker basket. No other personnel may carry out this task. The shaman will proceed to enter the containment chamber holding SCP-4715 and place the meat on the ground before SCP-4715, arranging it so that it matches the designs depicted in Document 4715 Waning Moon-04. They will then prostrate themselves before the basket and recite the phrase, This we offer for your continued torpor, flesh of your time, blood of my blood. The shaman must remain prostrate, and continue reciting the phrase until SCP-4715 has consumed the entirety of the meat. After consuming the meat, SCP-4715 may or may not kill and consume the shaman, but doing so does not indicate a failure of the procedure. Should the shaman survive, they are to retrieve the basket and exit the containment chamber. Failure to perform Procedure 4715 Waning Moon results in an exponential increase in aggression from SCP-4715, characterized by a marked increase in attempts to breach containment. To date, percent of these attempts have been successful. The continued use of surviving shamans have been approved by Area Director Roberts, along with reward, punitive, and incentive programs among the D-Class population held on site in an effort to ensure the continued success of Procedure 4715 Waning Moon. Containment chambers must be cleaned following the performance of Procedure 4715 Waning Moon each month. While this takes place, SCP-4715 is to be transferred to the adjacent chamber. During this time, any observed damage is to be repaired, and other required maintenance carried out. With the exception of preventing a breach of containment, Interaction with SCP-4715 is strictly limited to D-Class personnel performing Procedure 4715 Waning Moon. Unless actively attempting to breach containment, no physical harm or actions insinuating aggressive intent may be inflicted upon the subject. In the event of a containment breach, all fire is to be concentrated on its head with as much force as possible in order to render it unconscious or comatose before it grows too large to recontain. SCP-4715 is a large hexapodal mammalian carnivore 
with chimeric morphology, standing at a minimum height of 5.2 meters and weighing approximately 2300 kilograms. Genetic analysis has been inconsistent, showing traces of modern wildlife as well as Miocene-Pleistocene era and anomalous animals such as SCP. It has a robust frame and a vaguely feline skull, with a carnivorous dental structure, forward-set eyes, and a stout muzzle. Of note are a pair of large, backward-swept horns, which are not present in any member of Carnivora. Its primary forelimbs are long and end in proportionally large hands with seven digits, each with a large semi-retractable claw. Its secondary forelimbs are multi-jointed and significantly longer terminating in three heavily clawed digits. Its hind legs appear ursine, and its tail is long and muscular, acting like a tripod for balance when standing on its hind legs. SCP-4715 is highly aggressive, and has been observed attempting to attack most sapient life it has encountered. However, when observed in situ, it appears disinterested in most other fauna. It has never been observed hunting or pursuing other organisms, and large fauna avoids SCP-4715, instinctively fleeing from its scent. SCP-4715 displays a level of intelligence roughly on par with that of a chimpanzee pan troglodytes, and displays a particular aptitude for the fashioning and usage of tools as weapons. This behavior is not limited to primitive weaponry as evidenced by its redirection of anti-aircraft weaponry during Incident 4715-1944-J. Beyond these applications, SCP-4715 is highly intuitive, able to accurately read the emotional and mental state of sapient entities around it. In the event that SCP-4715 perceives an entity intended to harm another, including itself, it will rapidly gain mass proportional to the number of such entities. The source of new mass gained during these episodes is unknown. The most egregious breach saw SCP-4715 reach a height of approximately 24 meters and a weight approaching an estimated 56,000 kilograms, but depictions and recovered historic artifacts suggest the potential to grow larger given sufficient exposure to situations of conflict. This effect reverses quickly as soon as SCP-4715 can no longer sense the harmful intentions of others and it radiates intense heat as its mass decreases. SCP-4715 has been observed attempting to draw uninvolved individuals into states of conflict in order to increase its biomass, and often displays fascination and attraction towards states of conflict between sapient beings. SCP-4715's physiology grants it exceptional speed and strength. Additionally, it has proven highly resistant to most forms of conventional weaponry and physical trauma. It possesses reasonably consistent internal systems, largely indistinguishable from other large carnivorous mammals, but testing has shown that it does not require any form of nutrition to survive. It is resistant to most toxins, both artificial and naturally produced, as well as radiation and caustic or acidic chemical exposure. Oils produced beneath the dermis provide its fur and skin flame-retardant qualities providing it resistance to temperatures in excess of 1600 and below negative 150 degrees centigrade. The most reliable method of control appears to be lacrimatory agents and capsaicinoids, which it appears to have no particular resistance to. In addition to SCP-4715's considerable natural durability, the creature has proven able to regrow significant amounts of lost tissue, up to and including limbs that have been lost in violent encounters. Repair and regeneration of injuries and trauma will always spread outward from the central nervous system, and it will take longer to repair the more significant it is. As an example, a forelimb lost during initial containment of the specimen was fully regrown within seven days. To date, nothing has proven capable of causing damage to SCP-4715's cranium, vertebral column, or central nervous system and nothing has proven capable of neutralizing its capacity for regeneration. Addendum 4715-1 The existence of SCP-4715 was confirmed by Foundation in October 1916, 
following event 4715-WWI-1916, but there is evidence suggesting its origin dates back significantly further in history. Recovered documents originating from various groups of interest, historical artifacts, and archaeological finds suggest that SCP-4715 has existed in its present form for the majority of human history. The following is a brief catalog of selected notable documents pertaining to the pre-Foundation history of SCP-4715. A complete list of collected documents can be seen in document SCP-4715-HD-07. Historic Documentation SCP-4715-19-R Description SCP-4715-56-R is a series of Roman frescoes discovered in a ruined subterranean Roman structure, located below Istanbul, Turkey, on May 15, 1980. They depict a sequence of events involving Roman soldiers engaging in battle against Sasanian forces. The following fresco shows SCP-4715 engaging both forces, and the final fresco shows the Roman soldiers appeasing SCP-4715 with large stocks of meat. Relevant details. This is the earliest known modern depiction of religious behavior around SCP-4715. Historic Documentation SCP-4715-36-H SCP-4715-361-H is the designation of a series of proto-human cave paintings discovered in the Ardèche region of France on October 27, 2005. These consist of imagery of SCP-4715 engaging in attacks upon humanoid figures, with many examples being surrounded by skulls and other symbolic imagery. Radiocarbon dating places the origin of these paintings at being approximately 32,000 to 30,000 years before present. Relevant details The example pictured is believed to depict SCP-4715 engaging in an intimidation display. It is not known what this display was directed towards, as the cave wall immediately beside this painting had since been destroyed. Historic Documentation SCP-4715-238 SCP-4715-238 is a large wood carving measuring 5 meters by 2 meters by 0.4 meters, originating from mid-14th century Prussia. It depicts 16 mounted Teutonic Knights engaging in a cavalry charge against SCP-4715. This is one of the earliest known depictions of SCP-4715's size-altering effect known. If the scale of this depiction is correct, it depicts SCP-4715 being 9.4 meters in height while engaging 16 mounted knights, which is consistent with the size change displayed in modern observations. An engraving translated to read, Banishing of the Beast from the Earth, is present beneath the image. Relevant Details SCP-4715-238 was originally sent to Site-19 via a carrier service on December 5, 1981, and included a note reading, Dear Sir or Madam, Knowledge is power, and we have observed your organization gathering resources in order to learn more about the subject of this carbon. Given your modus operandi, we believe that in providing this historic artifact, free of charge, you may be able to successfully contain this creature and put a stop to its disruptive activities. Yours sincerely, Nigel Tensington Evers, Marshall Carter and Dark LLP Historic Documentation SCP-4715-379-B Description Journal belonging to one Wei Zemin, a Chinese farmer displaced by the Taiping Rebellion between 1850 and 1864 who observed and sketched what he described as a monster emerging from a large pile of battlefield casualties and proceeding to move at speed in the direction of Nanjing. SCP-4715-379-B was confiscated from an archaeological team who discovered it while researching the rebellion. Relevant Details The following is a translated passage from SCP-4715-379-B. After the village was massacred and the soldiers moved on, there were many bodies still clinging to earthly possessions 
that could be of great aid to my family. Waiting for the cover of nightfall, the smell was even worse than usual for a massacred town, and it seemed in the light of the setting sun that the sea of corpses stretched as far as the eye could see. Then, from the tallest of the piles of the dead came a monster. It burst forth from the dead like a great fish from the sea, and its bellow was so evil it could not possibly come from a godly creature. It shook the blood from its midnight hair, and fled with haste to Nanjing. Addendum 4715-2 Notice from the Foundation Records and Information Security Administration. The following file is Level 4-1000 classified. Any attempt to access this file without Level 4-1000 authorization will be logged and will lead to disciplinary action. Dr. Stephen Roberts, Area Director 4715-23 Area Director Statement As much as it is the job of the Foundation to know all there is to know about the objects we contain, it has always been accepted that there is a great deal more that we don't know. After all, how are we supposed to explain how a box that plays with the laws of physics could possibly exist, or to know the motivation of an obscene and corrosive old man who hunts people for sport? How are we to understand the origins of a monster that has existed at least as long as humanity? Well, in that last case, a recent discovery has opened a new avenue that has allowed us to better understand not only the origins of SCP-4715, but also how to better contain it. This discovery is LOI-517 Sigma, and has proven invaluable in not only broadening our knowledge of SCP-4715, but also in providing many of the current containment procedures implemented today. It is important to remember that without the knowledge obtained from this site, we would likely still be trying to contain 4715 with automated gunfire and having to withstand containment breaches every few years. The following document is a brief overview of LOI-517 Sigma, including details on a number of notable artifacts pertaining to SCP-4715 discovered within the area. Dr. Stephen Roberts, Area Director 4715-23 An overview on location of interest 517 Sigma and notable items contained within. LOI-517 Sigma was first discovered by civilian outdoor enthusiasts in 2009, who later informed the University of British Columbia of its location, describing some kind of shiny bunker or Egyptian colosseum in some caves lit up by shiny plants. While the University politely dismissed these claims, Foundation operatives were sent to investigate the area. The cave's entrance was located, and an exploration revealed a structure built in a large cavern deep within the system. Investigation revealed this structure was a long abandoned and dormant entrance to an organic complex of similar construction to SCP-2932, located approximately 900 meters below sea level. This complex had been determined to have served a similar function as the aforementioned location, albeit on a smaller scale and focused on the containment of SCP-4715. There are minimal signs of damage to any of the structures and the organic devices within are alive and powered, but inactive. A substructure at the bottom of the complex has been confirmed as once housing SCP-4715, and is constructed from indestructible plant material inscribed with various designs bearing similarity to those found in various occult manuscripts and cave paintings. The structure features multiple redundant doors and linked security features, all of which are inactive. Rooms throughout the rest of the complex appear to be focused on providing research, administrative and residential functionality, and show no sign of habitation. Throughout the complex are multiple images and descriptions of SCP-4715, depicting it engaging numerous instances of the original owners of LOI-517 Sigma. See Document Alpha-1596-1000 for more information and other unidentified entities in combat in a manner largely inconsistent with modern-day observation, though some depictions show SCP-4715 significantly larger than any previously recorded size. It is unknown if this is due to the artistic interpretations being inaccurate, or if SCP-4715 can indeed reach even larger sizes. Beyond those pertaining to containment, 
There are two notable sources of documentation regarding SCP-4715, located within LOI-517 Sigma, that may shed some light on the possible origin of the subject. These have been translated from images provided to SCP-2932-A, who told Foundation personnel that it was unaware of this location, citing its quote, lack of omniscience. Unquote. Document 4715-1000-H40 Description Document 4715-1000-H40 was found carved above the access ports on the structure, compromising the containment chamber formerly housing SCP-4715. The text is well preserved, but sections have been rendered incomprehensible by large scratches obscuring the writing. Illegible, lingering price of overthrowing those that came before. A demon born of blood and war, illegible, the bloodiest night, where illegible children and fae alike indiscriminately. Illegible wept and watched as loved ones turned to light. Illegible, and from atrocity was born abomination. Our fault, illegible, their fault. Illegible, slaughter of thousands, but was thrown down and legible remain. Incarcerated for endless rotation. Note, it is hypothesized that this information was carved into the containment structure as a failsafe in the event of power outage, rather than stored in organic devices similar to those found elsewhere in the structure. Document 4715-1000-A7 Description Unlike other documents recovered within LOI-517 Sigma, Document 4715-1000-A7 has been painted onto a wall in a recently discovered room within the complex, beside a large organic mechanism, with various interfaces. It is presumed that this device controlled the security or power of the complex. Transcription. The day the flowers bloomed was long ago now. Our shining cities are gone. The surviving children turned to beasts of the earth. We are gone now. The children of the sun have turned our weapons upon themselves, and they sleep in the night. They know not of the demon born from war, and cast aside any tool that could turn aside its fury. Endless rotation ends now. May the hairless usurpers suffer at its hands and pay for their transgression. To any child of the night who finds my message, know that I have committed this crime to avenge our demise. You will not forgive me. Notes. Along with this message, the skeleton of an SCP-1000 instance was discovered resting on the floor of the room with a hole in its skull. Analysis and radiocarbon dating of the skull suggests that the individual killed itself 34,000 to 33,000 years before present.